So I was kind of panicking a little bit earlier. Riders need me to do this video to time with all this rehydrated relief business. I'll link down below to find out more about that. And I didn't know what to do. So I did what I normally do when I went for a walk. There were a few little interruptions. Met some of the locals. Some of the locals were a little, I mean, aggressive. And eventually, as usual, I found a video to upload. I was pretty happy. Anyway, let's give it a watch. SpongeBob SquarePants is a brand that's gone through many eras, changes, evolutions, and phases. From changes in the show, bookmarked by releases of movies, to ones we think of less, like the comic book era, which has definitely evolved and changed over the years. But what comes to my mind the most are the video games. The SpongeBob brand has gone through some very different eras with its video games, and as we stand on the edge of a brand newer era of games, I think it would be good to look back over what was. This video is a look back at the games that were and how they have stuck with us. With the help of some guests, we will explore some very important SpongeBob games that mark different times for the brand, Nickelodeon and the show itself. These games are important to us for one reason or another, and it's worth talking about them at length and exploring what they represented. Welcome to this retrospective of SpongeBob video games. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is I asked Riders DX, Sheriff the Great, Bassub, and Who Needs Normal to put together a little piece on SpongeBob games that they have a strong opinion on. We'll be covering a whole bunch of games through the years, and I'll be filling in the gaps of important game releases between their pieces. Now let's get into this. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Now, I was originally going to do this whole thing about the very first SpongeBob games to ever be released, but I feel like this whole era and batch of SpongeBob games lasting from around 2001 to 2002 can be summed up with Employee of the Month. Oh my lord. While this isn't the first SpongeBob game ever made, I think it's a good representation of this era as it's a cheaply made game that shows Nickelodeon was still kind of skeptical about this show that was still really starting to pick up steam now. But enough about all that, Employee of the Month. For those of you who've stuck around this channel for a while, you might remember I've talked about this game before at some length, but I'll do it again! Developed by AWE Games and published by old THQ, Employee of the Month is a point-and-click adventure game. This style of game was a very popular gameplay choice for SpongeBob games at this time, and for kids' games in general. This IP boasts several point-and-click games that were all released around this time. Most likely because they were cheap, could use a lot of drawn images instead of models, making development quicker, and it was known to sit well with children. The game got average to good reviews. Tom King of Adventure Games gave it a 3 out of 5, saying that it was very easy and there was little replay value. But what do I think? I think this game is a perfect snapshot of time before the SpongeBob brand had proved itself to be a money-making machine. But more importantly, a show that would stick with every generation that saw it. These games were little more than experiments for Nick, to see if this show could break into the video game world as well as it had broken into the TV world. Now this is easily my favourite Spongebob game. I think it stands heads higher than nearly every other game released since. It's a fantastic little experience that captures the identity, humour, style and mood of Spongebob perfectly. I've played it so many times and I never get tired of how well it presents situations, dialogue and comedy in a way that perfectly fits the early seasons. It's a wonderful experience that I can't recommend enough if you can find a way to play it on an older computer or something like that. Hey beautiful humans, I'm Riders DX, and I make videos on a certain remake I'm sure you're all pretty aware of. Today I'll be diving into a really awkward title in the SpongeBob lineup, and that is Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. Revenge of the Flying Dutchman was released back in the latter half of 2002, with each version of the game actually getting released on a different day in the US. The console version was developed by Big Sky Interactive. The game itself has a mixed legacy. Many people swear to it as being one of the worst titles to have ever come out of the Spongebob franchise, especially when compared to its greatly superior counterpart that came out a year later. But what do I ultimately think of this game? 
This game is a 3D platformer where you play as solely Spongebob, navigating your way through various locations of Bikini Bottom. You can do various kinds of jumps and also have different abilities rooted to unique costumes. The game is partly non-linear, as you are able to go to certain areas of the game depending on what tasks you have completed in other levels. On top of that, when you enter the levels, most of them don't have a clear direction of where you need to go. Your ultimate goal is just to complete all the tasks tied to the level to ultimately find a Dutchman's treasure. I could trash this game really hard if I wanted to. I could point out the lack of polish in its graphics, its short length, the subpar music, and so much more. But I don't want to. Instead, I want to announce that I like this game. And here's why. Underneath all the rubble that consistently drags this game is, in my opinion, a solid platforming experience. I really enjoy the more open nature of this game. While there is a goal you need to accomplish and the game doesn't give you many ways to deviate from that, there's still quite a bit of variation in how you reach that end goal. One example is after you get the Dutchman's first treasure. You're led to the Krusty Krab and here, you're given two ways to go about progressing in the game. You could follow Mr. Krabs to down to Bikini Bottom to help with his delivery service, or you could follow Screwboot, which eventually leads to a visit at Sandy's Tree Dome. And once you're in one of those levels, you have free reign to pursue any objective you want first. Sure, you end up in the same place no matter where you start, but I just love that sense of freedom that not even Battle Bikini Bottom gave. Not to mention, the platforming itself is solid enough and could have really shined if we had some better level design. I could go on for a lot longer, but that's the basic gist of what I enjoy most about this game. This was one of the first main console Spongebob games to come out, and was sort of released when the franchise was on the brink of establishing global dominance. There was such a high sense of quality associated with Spongebob at this point, I wouldn't blame people having high expectations for Spongebob's first 3D platformer on this console generation. I don't think the game really has the quality that this era deserved its games to have, but overall the game still has a charm to it that I can't help but love. It has a very season 1 feel and look to it, albeit not as great. It definitely takes me back to that era of Spongebob, the era before things really began to pop for the yellow guy. Plus, it's got Clancy Brown, something that BFBB will never have. Battle for Bikini Bottom is easily the most popular and most respected game that has ever come from the Spongebob IP proven in no small part by the remake that we all fought hard for. Released in 2003, developed by Heavy Iron Studios and published by THQ, this was the first Spongebob game that completely left behind the stigma around tie-in games, carving out its own identity as a stellar 3D platformer. On release, it received mixed to average reviews, as all Spongebob games get. Many reviewers pointed to its generic gameplay loop and lack of any real innovation to the 3D platformer genre as its greatest failing but its capturing of the Spongebob universe instilled it with enough flair to be worthwhile. The game was much more warmly received by the fans of the show, winning the 2004 Kids' Choice Awards, and later was Player's Choice on all consoles it appeared on. The game is your usual 3D platformer, collecting golden spatulas in a variety of Spongebob locations, filled to the brim with references to the show at every turn. My opinion on this game is ever-evolving. On my original playthrough a few years ago, I was very unimpressed and pretty disappointed with the game, which sequel, the Spongebob movie game, would go down as one of my top 5 favourite games ever made. On subsequent playthroughs and more time with the game, my opinion has constantly changed and shifted. At the moment, I believe I've reached a good middle ground with the game that I believe is both fair on the game, which my original opinion wasn't, and represents my current opinion and frustrations with the game in an honest fashion. I never intend to sugarcoat my opinions to avoid backlash, but I can see when my opinions were unfair, and I believe I fixed that through looking at the game multiple times. I will never be a strong fan of this game. I enjoy many other SpongeBob games far more, and I don't think I will ever see it in the way others do, because I have no nostalgia for it. To me, it's just another 3D platformer, but I respect the title for all it's done. Very few other games can receive mixed reviews on impact and still have a fan base that will push it for over a decade and through their love for it, bring around an official remake of the game. Very few games can boast that type of achievement and that type of fan base. And only a very special game at that can have both at the same time. This is a special game for so many people and I respect that. While I will probably never see what all the hype is about, I understand it is important to people and something to be celebrated. Battle for Guinea Bottom is the cornerstone of this fan base, A representation of an era of Spongebob, a very special era, an era of quality, when the show and games were at their best and using companies that loved the show and were astoundingly creative.
Hey guys, I'm Who Needs Normal, and I'll be the one discussing the SpongeBob SquarePants movie game for you today. In the ancient times of 2004, the beloved cartoon Sponge was finally getting his first theatrical film after three fantastic seasons. To coincide with this new movie, Nickelodeon tasked THQ and Heavy Iron Studios with creating a game based around the premise. It was an obvious choice for them to make, and it made even more sense to have Heavy Iron develop the title after Battle for Bikini Bottom. In a lot of ways, the SpongeBob movie game plays much the same as its predecessor, as it's a 3D platformer with the same models, basic moves, and mechanics, albeit with a few additions to the moveset. The movie game's main goal is to collect goofy goober tokens throughout the various areas, and you will collect a ton of macho points that you can use for the game's upgrade system that lets you improve new and returning abilities as you unlock them. For example, you can give Patrick's new cartwheel move a wider attack radius, or turn SpongeBob's bash attack into a time-based explosive. The game is structured in a more simple and linear fashion, opting to replace the hub world with a basic menu to get from level to level, similar to how you could travel to a specific spatula in Battle for Bikini Bottom. The platforming levels feel pretty much the same as anything you would find in Battle for Bikini Bottom, but have an almost darker tone as they are all based on moments from the movie. Speaking of which, in between the levels you will be presented with picture-based cutscenes that roughly tell the story from the film. Some interesting additions to the format include driving segments with the paddy wagon and massive slide segments. There are also special portals of sorts that you can find in the platforming levels that present you with advanced challenges. These vary from platforming and rolling with the sponge ball from Battle for Bikini Bottom to fighting large waves of enemies. These levels certainly aren't mind-blowing, but they bring a nice change of pace and can often be a greater challenge to complete. The boss levels are pretty solid, and the final showdown with King Neptune closes out the adventure in a satisfying way. The SpongeBob movie game was received fairly well by critics of the day. Juan Castro of IGN said, The SpongeBob SquarePants movie delivers an entertaining and oftentimes challenging mix of platform and driving sequences. Controls feel responsive, and the camera rarely hinders your view of the action, and the humor of the show practically seeps out of every clamshell and bed of kelp you cross. Anise Hollingstead of the now defunct Game Zone said, The SpongeBob SquarePants movie is an excellent game, and one which makes prime use of its movie tie-in very successfully. This game is fun and exciting, and offers a good amount of challenge for kids and adults alike. There is plenty of variety between racing challenges and platform levels, and of course, who couldn't love SpongeBob? While this game is certainly different from the arguably better Battle for Bikini Bottom, I would say it is certainly one of the best SpongeBob titles there is, not to mention one of the best movie tie-in games. Levels like I'm Ready Depression and the bonus platforming segments hold some of my most iconic gaming memories. Funnily enough though, I never actually completed this game until just a few months ago. I got stuck trying to collect enough Goofy Goober tokens to unlock the Sonic Wave attack, and then my childhood copy broke. I'm not sure what that says about nostalgia versus actual quality, but I think it shows that this game can be enjoyed by even adults all these years later. This game came out right before the point in time where many people argued the show went downhill. For some, it is considered to be the last good SpongeBob game, and others argue it's not really that great. Either way, Nickelodeon and THQ shifted gears after its release, and gave future projects to different developers. This feels to me as the closing of one chapter for the cartoon and the games themselves, and the beginning of a chaotic period of Nick and THQ trying new ideas. Whether those ideas were ever really better or more successful is up for debate, but one thing is clear, the show and games never felt quite the same again. Maybe it is for that reason that the Spongebob movie game remains a beloved and iconic piece of Spongebob history to this day. Yes, Amy, I got you. Yeah, I can help you. There you go. It's all good. I own, uh, plenty of the Spongebob games. Yeah, okay. Yeah, look, look I'm gonna get off. There's, you know, so many to choose from. It's gonna take me a little while, so I'll just, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Lights, camera, pants it is, I guess. Hey everyone, I'm Bassob. I have a YouTube channel where I make SpongeBob gaming related content as well as Sly Cooper or pretty much any game that I'm into where I have a topic I want to talk about, I just do it. 
uh, there really isn't any pattern to my channel. I just pretty much do whatever I want. But I do really enjoy SpongeBob games, even though I haven't played in many. <laughs> I only really grew up with Battle for Bikini Bottom as well as Lights, Camera, Pants. Recently, I've gotten into other games like Revenge of the Flying Dutchman, the movie game, and stuff like that. But in terms of games that I've played extensively, it really just is Battle for Bikini Bottom and Lights, Camera, Pants. But I am happy to say that both of those games are fantastic. Of course, we're getting the remake for Battle for Bikini Bottom, but I feel like Lights, Camera, Pants definitely should be a game that we get a sequel for, or a remake, or whatever. To my knowledge, I believe it's the only SpongeBob Party game that we ever received, and we know it's a good one at that. The game was released on October 19th of 2005, was made by AWE Games, and published by THQ, of course. The game is pretty much a collection of mini games where you can play as SpongeBob, Patrick, and a bunch of other SpongeBob SquarePants characters, and compete against your friends to get high scores, or even computer players if you have no friends, like me. So you're probably thinking, yeah, it's your average party game, what makes it so great? Uh, not much. <laughs> it's just a really a good time. However, I have noticed that this game is a lot more focused on fast paced mini games that require very fast reflexes instead of sheer luck or strategy. Uh, well, I guess strategy a little bit, but a lot of this you just have to be go mode, go mode, go mode all the time. Mini games where you flip burgers and there's a ton of stuff in the air happening at once. A sort of whack a mole game, a game where you have to press certain buttons at a certain time. You know, a rhythm based game that you know that isn't a lot of a lot of party games. A racing minigame, just a bunch of things that require a lot of speed and great reflexes that I think kind of differentiates a little bit from like, let's say Mario Party. Of course, Mario Party can have that, but this game really focuses in on it, and let me tell you, if you take a look at just a random section of gameplay from this game, and you're not necessarily familiar with it, you probably can't even tell what's going on. I played this game when I was really young, and recently I kind of came back to it within the past year or so since Rehydrated was announced, and when I first saw gameplay of this game after years and years and years of not playing it, I, I couldn't even really tell what was happening on screen, I had, to, I had to follow it very thoroughly. But I think that's great and makes it a lot different from other party games that you usually have, and I really enjoy this game. I can sit down, have a really great time with it with friends. It's not necessarily like the best game I've ever played. You know, initial review scores were pretty average as well. IGN gave it a 7 out of 10. Metacritic, I believe, it has a 59%, so not doing so great over there, but overall, it's just a good time, and of course, it's SpongeBob themed. You'll get a lot of what you get with normal party games. Like I said, there is a lot more reflexes and speed involved, you know, memorizing patterns and stuff like that. A lot of mini games like that, which I really like. It's really intense, and when you have a group of people on the couch playing it, it can get really, really insane. And Mario Party is the game with the reputation that it destroys friendships, so let me tell you, this game is even crazier. Like I said before, this game isn't a masterpiece, but it is a good time, and it's one of the only Spongebob Party games out there. It may be the only one, I'm not really sure. People seem to be very fond of it, but it's not necessarily really popular when it comes to Spongebob games. You know, you got uh, Battle for Bikini Bottom, of course, the movie game, uh, Truth or Square, th those bigger games. This one kind of gets left behind. Hopefully in the future, we can get more Spongebob Party games like this, mini game collections, all that sort of stuff. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But thank you for seeing me, for having me on the channel. Lights, Camera, Pants is a game that I really enjoy and I'm pretty passionate about as well. Of course, not better than Battle for Bikini Bottom. I don't want anybody attacking me uh, because I thought I said that. <laughs> but either way, really great game. Uh, if you guys haven't checked it out already, I definitely recommend it. And yeah, see y'all later. Creature from the Krusty Krab, developed by Blitz Games and published by good old THQ. This game is a very interesting case in the SpongeBob fanbase and also just as a game itself. Featuring a wide array of gameplay styles and three playable characters, Creature from the Krusty Krab is easily the most diverse game this franchise has ever had, boasting driving segments, 2.5D running segments, a superhero themed beat em up, on rail shooting, and a plethora of mini games. The game, like most SpongeBob games, received mixed reviews when it was first released, but was nominated for an Annie Award for Best Animated Video Game and won the 2007 Kids' Choice Awards. Nintendo Power called it the most ambitious and most successful SpongeBob game to date, but many also pointed out the subpar graphics, and also due to the game's very out-of-the-box tone and design, many said it didn't feel like a SpongeBob game as a result of that. Creature from the Krusty Krab is a very interesting game for me in the grand scheme of SpongeBob games. It has evolved a lot in the fan base, originally being a rather forgotten game that was rarely talked about. I was always so happy whenever someone would bring it up in a video or a comment, as for the longest time it felt like only I knew about it, and talked about it in videos. 
but over the past few years, it's grown in popularity and notoriety to stand as one of the big three SpongeBob games, with Battle for Bikini Bottom and the movie game. And arguably as well, Lights, Camera, Pants sometimes does take its spot, but th that's up to debate. The rise in popularity, I believe, is due to its similarities to the other big three, but mostly because of its differences. No one ever starts a conversation as, oh, I love Creature from the Krusty Krab, it's so similar to Bound for Queen Bottom, it's always, I love Creature from the Krusty Krab, it's so weird. There is no other SpongeBob game like this, giving it a very individual flavour and place in the hearts of its fans. In my opinion, I think it's a very good game, held back by some not well fleshed out segments, and while it has so many different gameplay styles, it suffers from getting stale as none of those gameplay styles have as much depth to them as they would if they were the only gameplay style. But the creativity, whimsical presentation, and darker tone wins me over every time. Also, the music is just a cut above all other SpongeBob games, giving it a completely different experience. There are few things as satisfying as destroying Bikini Bottom as Plankton, or fighting off waves of goons as Patrick while Mermaid Man cracks jokes, or falling down a giant hole before being swallowed by an Alaskan bullworm. In many ways, it's far better than it has any right to be, especially considering Blitz's next game was so lackluster. I believe this was the last great SpongeBob game, and the end of an era where Nickelodeon and THQ favoured creativity over mass market appeal. I mean, what's mass market about a game like this? It's so weird and different from any other SpongeBob game before it. It was creativity. It was pure just creativity, and I love that. After this, we saw the rise of titles like Atlanta Square Pantus and Globs of Doom. While these titles do have their defenders, they're nothing in comparison to what came before, and are little more than cash grabs in comparison to the titles we've been talking about before. While not all bad after this, some are even on the good side of things, the release of Creature from the Krusty Krab was definitely the end of an era. Hi everyone, I am Sheriff the Great, and the game that I will be talking about is SpongeBob's Truth or Square. So, this game was developed by the same studio that did Battle for Bikini Bottom and Movie Game, which is Heavy Iron Studios, and it was released in the year of 2009. The game was overall, I want to say it was well received, I have never known anyone to say, oh, I don't like this bit, I don't like this bit, but I like this bit. I've never seen someone on the fence with this game. They've either really liked it or really despised it. And so I think that this game was sort of 50-50 in terms of reception. Assuming you have played Battle for Bikini Bottom, I would like to say that this game plays somewhat similarly in the fact that it does have a lot of similar movesets. Not 100% the same sort of like throwing stuff and whatnot, but sort of the generic spinning mechanics and the attack mechanics such as like one of them is a spatula where Spongebob turns into a spatula and he can thwart his enemies. And then another one is sort of, he blows a bub, he sort of blows a sort of like a bubble-esque bubble bowl out of his mouth, and that can, you know, hit close by opponents. In some respects, that is very similar to the bubble bowl, so I feel like that, in some ways, it is very similar to BFBB. So, personally, I have played Truth or Square a few times all the way through, and through the first playthrough, obviously it's like, it's like a nice breath of fresh air from like the last previous SpongeBob games and all that, because the game essentially takes you to previous episodes and sort of places you there in a, f you know, in a free way to play. But then when you're playing through sort of the second time, the third time, it just feels like a generic platformer. It doesn't feel like there's anything to it. So I would say that it doesn't have a, l it does not have a lot of replayability. It's more of those, oh, I've just seen this game at the shop. I'm going to pick it up, play it once, and that'll be the last you see of it. But obviously me being me, I like my Spongebob games, I will play it over and over and over because that is the reason behind it. I enjoy Spongebob games, but objectively, this game is probably only good for one or two playthroughs at the most. Now, for when the game was actually made, 2009, was actually very well done because in 2009, Spongebob was sort of on the decline and no one was really sort of paying attention to the newer seasons, but then obviously you had Truth or Square, this brand new game to tie in with the upcoming 10 year anniversary special. And I feel that out of all the new series, out of everything new that came out between 2007 and say 2012, I feel that Truth or Square was the pinnacle of that time frame 
Now, my overall opinion on the game would be that I like it. And this is... And I'm being objective about this. I'm not factoring in the nostalgia, the fact that it's a SpongeBob game. I think objectively, it is a very good game. And al although this is my opinion, obviously it's not fact. I can't prove that fact. But I think that it is a great game. You know, if you're just picking it up for the first time, it is something it, like I've like I previously said. It's a nice breath of fresh air from the previous SpongeBob games. So all in all, I would say that. It is a great game that I would highly recommend you pick up. Thank you very much, Chest, for letting me take part in this video. It's something I have enjoyed sort of taking a deeper look into. And thank you, the viewer, for listening to my voice for about three minutes. See you all later. Now it's time to talk about a very interesting game in its own right, which is Plankton's Robotic Revenge. Now, I've always been a bit of a defender of this game for the simple reason that it isn't as bad as Hero Pants, which is more or less an unfinished, cheaply made cash grab. That's all it is. The game falls into some of the similar issues. It was made clearly for not very much and smashed out quickly. It was of course published by Activision and developed by Behaviour Interactive. Now, why am I a defender of this game? Well, the consensus from critics with this game is very low. IGN gave it a 3.5 out of 10, and PlayStation Magazine gave it a slightly better 5 out of 10. But it's mainly the SpongeBob community that has torn into this game, and I never really understood why, as in my eyes, Hero Pants deserves all that criticism and more. But it's very rarely brought up. My opinion on Robotic Revenge is that at its best, it's like a demo of a Ratchet & Clank game, and at its worst, it's kind of just boring. It's not as broken as Hero Pants, it's just more often than not boring. What's more interesting about this game is what it says about Spongebob at this time. This was in 2013, in many people's eyes, one of the lowest points for Spongebob as a brand. Sure it was bringing in the big bucks, but for many people, it was kind of soulless at this point. I think this game also really communicates a lot about Nick's view of the IP at this point, giving it away to Activision and letting them knock out these two games. This was in 2013, when Nickelodeon had severed most of its ties with the video game world, after the loss of THQ and many of the companies that Nick had used as publishers and developers in the past. Many of them were gone now, and these were the types of games Nick was interested in improving. Cheap games made for exploiting the brand. Very different to the games of the past. Well, there you have it. I'm sure we could go on for hours talking about the 2D platformers and then some of the GBA games and maybe even some of the more uh, PC releases that people don't talk about all that often or even some of the more recent games like Nickelodeon Kart Racers. But I feel like the games we've talked about today are the most important titles released under the SpongeBob brand. These games represent many different eras of that brand and give us an insight into what was. From classics to shovelware, SpongeBob's seen it all and we've stood by it for many years experiencing the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. And now we stand on the edge of a brand new era, an era of remakes, remasters, re-releases, and new titles. Brand new companies, old and new fans, and a very different Nickelodeon. But the one thing that's never changed is our love for this show and these games. A love strong enough to get us through titles like Robotic Revenge, so that we can enjoy those gems like Lights, Camera, Pants. Thank you very so much for watching. Thank you to Riders DX, Who Needs Normal, Sheriff the Great, and Bassub for helping me out with this video. I'd also like to recommend you all check out the link below to learn more about the Rehydrated Relief, and donate if you can to also get the chance of winning a copy of Balfini Bottom Rehydrated while supporting this amazing cause. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. Mwah.